Dave, why don't we shift gears quickly? Get it? Shift gears. The Fast Nine. <laughs> Strap wow. yourself in. We're going to the moon with uh, Jeff Bezos. Twenty-six million dollars just to sit next to him. I think it was something like that, right? For like eleven minutes, it's, whatever that was. It's about right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Fast Nine, man. Tell me about it. Fast Nine, the tenth movie in the Fast and Furious franchise. Crazy though we've gotten to this point, but uh, here we are. And uh, this is a movie that's been out overseas, namely in Asia, for over a month, about six weeks at this point, doing very well. And we just released in the U.S. and the U.K. this past weekend, setting new U.S. box office records along the way. $70 million, which actually outgrossed Hobbs and Shaw's opening weekend. Notably, that was not during any semblance of COVID. So a strong start at the box office for F9 and makes Universal look smart from immediately delaying the film a year, basically as soon as COVID began. And... I think for me, I'm a fan of the Fast and Furious franchise. I feel like most people that go to these movies at this point is a fan of them or doesn't care about, like, they're just kind of like a casual fan of movies, you know? It's like, oh, I'll go see Fast 9. I haven't seen, like, six of the other ones, but I'll see this anyway because it's a big budget blockbuster and I like the big screen, you know? Like, I don't think anyone goes into these movies with like grand like like critical expectations but it's actually really funny to look back on how the fast and furious franchise has evolved over 10 movies and also how uh, like four quadrants it is it's a has a very diverse fan base just like it has a very diverse cast and now getting fast nine uh i think just bluntly it's not as strong as like the recent run of level up that fast did when we got fast five six and furious seven we're not at that point anymore and i think we have to accept that we're not at that point anymore probably a big part of that is just that paul walker is no longer with us we don't have brian anymore so the 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 movies just are kind of lacking a certain piece but this is still over the top crazy shit that you expect from recent fast movies so if that's what you like this really delivers on that, but there is a lot of brainless shit, uh, and it's it's it, it, it's an, it's not as good as five, six, or seven. So, uh, it's actually spurred a lot of interesting conversation, I think, in terms of people thinking the uh, there's a two part finale that they're gonna, I believe, start shooting in about a year uh, next January. So, uh, so fast ten and eleven, or ten part one and two. Uh, the end. Yeah, they're they're ending the main the main Fast and Furious story anyway, and I, it's it's pretty a lot of interesting conversations. Will 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 Fast downshift and bring uh, it all back around? Will we actually get around to the racing and stuff in smaller scale? Because at the end of the day, this is not a, this is not a franchise about street racing. It's also not a franchise about uh, the crazy action. Even though we've had a lot of it's been all action for the past ten years. It's it's a soap. It's it's about it's about yeah. family, like the cliche. It's about the characters, and I think it would be really effective to all the hardcore fans if they they actually switch it up and, and slow it down at the very end. We'll see. But yeah, this is um, it's a lot like uh, the Fate of Furious, the last main main entry, where it's kind of brainless, but you're kind of there for the character moments at the end of the day, and you hope the big set pieces hit. And we don't. I don't think like. The set pieces in this are as good as some of the other ones of late, but there's some cool stuff with magnets. I like that, you know, like magnets pulling fucking up cars and stuff, you know. Magnets. Know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, shout out Jesse. Uh, what's his last name on Breaking Bad? I don't remember. Jesse Pink- Pinkman. Yeah. Pinkman. Science I was bitch. Jesse Plemons, and I was like, that's the wrong one. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. So they actually do go to space in this one, right? Yeah, uh, Roman and uh, Tej, uh, Ludacris, and Tyrese, they do go to space with the help of the Tokyo Drift crew who make a, a complete return. Lucas Black, Bow Wow, Bow-wow, and uh, the other guy. I forget his name. Yeah, so that was a cool moment. Unexpected. Uh, yeah, yeah. And they go to space. And I actually, like, that, that, that's too, that's a funny thing too. That's been like a, a joke, a cliche about fast. You keep making it bigger and bigger. The only thing you have left to do is go to space. Right. It doesn't completely land. It, it's not, uh, not as cool as you'd think. 
Hmm. So that's a little disappointing to me, which is why, like, again, like at this point, we don't have to get any bigger. I actually think there's a lot more to gain if we get smaller one more time at the end. But yeah, they do good space. They 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 actually did it. Like unironically, <laughs> they did it. You know, it's it's funny though because as you're talking about it, what is it going to you know kind of revert back for this these final two movies? Uh, something a little smaller. I think one of the things that I, I believe from the podcast I've listened to about this seems like fast five is like when things start to really start like upping the ante every time and really move away from the racing more to like them just kind of doing these superhero ass things. And really at this point, it is like a soapy superhero movie, you know, Mm -hmm. people die and come back. These guys are like ramming cars into each other, jumping cars up the, into the air. The cars never break. Yes. It's amazing. (laughs) But um, I I feel like it eventually they, they need to come back down to earth uh but for real like they they can't keep going bigger because there's literally nothing more that they really can do and still really call it the fast franchise but i was kind of wondering like what even are the essentials of the fast fran- franchise at this point obviously like family you have what well, vin diesel needs to be there and then after that it feels like you can just kind of like fit things in and like they have such a big cast at this point it doesn't really matter yeah yeah i, mean, I feel it's like dom and, and letty vin diesel and Michelle Rodriguez, they're probably the two central components. But like you said, the cast has ballooned. And I actually kind of buried the lead here. The cast got even bigger again because they brought Han back to life. And God, I, I really wish it was a surprise. They they spoiled it in the trailer. Yeah. And then we also, due to COVID, we're sitting with that for a year plus. Mm-hmm. So how did they bring that- him back? What did they say? And that that's the thing. They kind of yada yada yet. They did. Oh, uh, <laughs> Kurt Russell faked his death. He's back. But like Sun Kang as Han is a great, great presence. And I'm really excited to see more of him in 10 and 11. Yeah. But yeah, they kind of yada yada it. And I wish it was hidden. But on the other hand, Jordana Brewster gets more action than she's had in the past. Um, and, you know, speaking to something you mentioned before about how they're like basically superheroes at this point. There's actually a, a kind of uh, rotating or a revolving bit, meta bit, by Roman, where he's basically saying, like, yo, we're like invincible. Look at me. Not a scratch on me. They I had all these guys shoot at me. No bullet holes. Like, it, it's actually <laughs> hilarious. And, like, in general, Ro- Roman's a really funny character. But, yeah, I, uh, I, I mean, obviously, you have to know what your expectations are for the franchise when you watch these movies. Um, and I think... Well, the, the weakest thing for me with this is there's a lot of flashbacks to uh, Dom and his now revealed estranged brother, played Jacob, played by John Cena. Uh, there's a lot of flashbacks to their past. And like, like I said, it's really soapy. Like we got a lot of Dom family past stuff in this. And some of it works, some of it doesn't. I think the, probably the biggest sin with F9 is that the set pieces just don't quite reach the heights of some of the really famous ones like Fury 7 they jumped a car through a, a skyscraper which was in the trailer mm-hmm. and then when you watch the movie you realize then they drove through us into a second skyscraper and it was fucking amazing like fast five of course the the the, the uh, bank vault thing when it's being towed by the truck but there's some really famous stuff yeah and this like i guess the best set piece is apart from the generic man and stuff is like the best set piece was when dom like hooks his car to a rope bridge like slingshots him and letty but that was also in the trailer yeah i was gonna say I, I i saw that so right you know it's it's interesting and as we're thinking about superheroes and obviously we're always thinking about superheroes in terms of marvel dc could you see them with taking this huge cast after they finish these next two movies almost being like all right dom and letty gets the their own Spin off, and then we're gonna have this. These two kind of do their own mm. thing, and they're all gonna have their kind of different movies, and they might come back together in like I don't know, another ten years or something. Like right. Well, obviously we already started that in a certain sense with Hobbs and Shaw yeah. spin off, and there's a lot of rumblings about a female led spin off to come. Mm. And you think about it, I-, I love the idea because the female cast and fast is fucking stacked. Obviously, yeah. Michelle Rodriguez and Jordana Brewster will be there a lot as like central characters. You also have Helen Mirren and Charlize Theron yep. and Vanessa Kirby from Hobbs and Shaw and Natalie Emmanuel, of course, Ramsey, um, you know, from Game of Thrones. 
and then you could try and bring someone back like Eva Mendez. Like uh, there, there, there's a there's a lot of potential I think with the with the female led cast, so that would be cool. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. So and another thing too, the Fast Nine Universe colon the Fast Saga. They started calling it the Fast Saga. They are <laughs> not letting this shit die, even if they end their main films. That is abundantly obvious. And for for Universal, and you know what? I don't mind because think about it. Fast and Furious is the only like completely original franchise there is right now. You know, this shit came into being at the turn of the millennium and is still going as a top tier franchise. Everything else has a lot more history as IP, right? So mm-hmm. I say keep it going. Do what you got to do. Make that money. <laughs> yeah. Quick, quick question. Uh, behind you, I see Charlize Theron. Is this from the fat F9, this this poster? Yes. Yeah. She has a new haircut in F9. F8, notably, she had uh, dreads. And this time she has a very strange bowl cut. And she's really, not in the movie a lot. It, it's kind of, she was probably on set for two days. And nice callback, I guess, because she's like trapped in like a box at one point. It's like a glass box, very reminiscent of uh, when Magneto is in uh, the, the glass prison in X-Men 2. I just yeah. appreciate Charlie's uh, taking the challenge to find the worst haircut possible and see if she's still the most attractive woman in the world. Done it twice. She definitely and is. Yeah, still works. <laughs> 